Okay, part three. <clears throat> the meeting with Gabe Haldensale. The high priest said to visit him this afternoon, Zom said, upon my return to the high bishop's chambers. He is surely worried about you as well. I looked down at the leather bag that Ferdinand had given me. Maybe I should da show the extent of my appreciation by turning all the face stones into that golden sand. Hersher did say that it was a valuable research material. I am relieved to see you looking well again, Lady Rosemond, Monica said with a pleasant smile. I was surprised to see that she was already preparing lunch. It seemed that I had been talking with Lutz and the others for much longer than I had thought. Once I had eaten, I went to the high priest chambers. Ferdinand was probably mad that I had immediately ruined our schedules and forced us to come back to the temple early. I couldn't help but tremble as I stepped into his room, <clears throat> and the stern glare he shot me the moment I came into his view was enough to make me flinch. Ferdinand, I truly am sorry about how much I inconvenienced you today. <clears throat> you have indeed inconvenienced me. However, I see you are well again. It is because of your consideration that my fears have been vanquished and my energy has recovered. Ferdinand checked the color in my face before pointing to the leather bag in my hand. Were those of any use to you? Indeed, I thank you ever so much. I was once again surprised by the thorough nature of your preparations, I said as I returned the bag. Ferdinand checked the contents, then his expression turned to a grimace and he tapped his temple. It seemed I did not provide an unnecessary amount. Still, for you to have turned these this many face stones to dust, I can only imagine how emotionally disturbed you must have been. Better this than your emotions exploding within the castle, but still. I will need to think of a way to handle these situations without relying on the planting company. There is no need, Ferdinand. I feel better now. I'll do my best to, so that I can keep spreading books, I declared. I certainly didn't want him to start thinking of anything that would sever my connection to the planting company. Do only as we have already decided, Ferdinand shot back. Your behavior tends to become extreme when you are doing your best. Uh, okay, well, tell me what you what we have decided to do then. We went on to discuss our upcoming meeting with Keep Haldensale. <coughs> now that the magic contracts have been nullified, the Archduke will be, be permitting the establishment of new papermaking workshops. This meeting was mainly going to be about the Gutenberg's long-term stay. I also went ahead and reported to Ferdinand what I had just told Benno. Once our conversation was over, we hurried back to the castle where Ella had stayed behind. Riarda welcomed us with her lips pursed at my busy schedule, noting that she would have preferred me taking things more slowly, now that I finally had some spare time. <coughs> Unfortunately, it was becoming clear that I could only run away from noble society for so long. I ate dinner with Charlotte, who expressed concern for my health. It was ultimately decided that the meeting with Gabe Haldensale will be held in the afternoon two days later, and that Ferdinand would accompany me as my guardian. A noble life sure was a busy one. <clears throat> the meeting room for arch nobles was a bit fancier than the one I had visited previously. There were colorful tapestries, and the furniture seemed to be high quality and histor historied. Waiting inside was were Gabe Haldensale, his wife, and Elvira. Once Ferdinand and I sat down, Gabe Haldensale greeted us with his wife. At last, we have this chance to meet you, greet you formally, Lady Rosemine. May we pray for a blessing and appreciation of the serendipitous meeting, ordained by the harsh judgment of Abaglave, the god of life. You may. Gabe Haldensale certainly looks a lot like Mother. Well, of course, that's his, her brother, I think. His dark green eyes and dark brown eye, dark green hair and dark brown eyes resembled hers exactly. He wore a polite smile, but his gaze was sharp, and it was obvious that he was watching me carefully. Even as he knelt before me, he was exuding an unmistakable amount of pressure. He carried the firm aura of someone who was used to standing above others. On behalf of Haldensale, I wish to thank you. Oh, please, don't let Ferdinand find out about all this. He'll be so pissed. The Gieb and his wife had previously come all the way to Cardstead's estate for my baptism ceremony, but I had been dragged away by Wilfried and ended up falling unconscious before we could exchange greetings. Our next opportunity to formally meet had been during my debut, but I had been forced to leave prematurely after giving a blessing. Then, the following winter, we had, too, we had been too preoccupied fighting with the former Veronica nobles about Wilfried. Have I done something worthy of your thanks? I asked. I was offered pretty much the same explanation that Avara had already given me. Haldenzo had been receiving chalices filled with mana since I began working as an apprentice blue shrine maiden. My efforts had apparently caused crop production to rise across the entire province, which it had in turn made the people's lives a little, e little bit easier. Of course, this little bit had actually had a massive impact considering they had existed in perpetual poverty. I had learned in my lessons in Aaron Fest geography that Haldensdale was cold enough for its rivers to freeze over 
and that its citizens learned to live close together and take care of one another. The province it itself was expansive, but its population was focused in the southern half, with the northern ha the north having barely any inhabitants. To complicate matters further, Haldensdale was the province the Lord of Winter was most likely to appear in. Oh, great. No wonder. My knights have reported that your blessings provide much aid during the Lord of Winter hunt, gave Haldensdale noted. The color of the flag has returned to normal as well, his wife added with a kind smile, referring to Ironbox. Unsuccessful attempt to take over Aaronfest's higher-ups. Not to mention that, due to how long winter lasts in Hollandsale, many have been saved by the printing industry. From there, Gieb Hollandsale and his wife explained how well the Gutenbergs had worked uh, from their perspective. Lutz and the Grey Priest had apparently brought the necessary tools to a prepared workshop, put together the printing press, and then demonstrated how it worked. However, the printing press required the operator to organize the letter types into place, and almost no Hollandsale commoners knew how to read. The teaching process had taken a very long time as a result. I was stunned to see that all the Aaronfest craftsmen knew how to read, the Geep said. We had our hands full adopting the Gutenberg's technologies over the winter, and now we, must, now we must teach our own people how to read, after all. It would not do for them to mistakenly place the letter types upside down or not even realize it. The orphans in my orphanage learned through playing cards together and reading picture books, but the process is not a fast one, I explained. It might be wise to have lay scholars or apprentice scholars proofread the draft prints for now. Given that the books were being sold to nobles, quality assurance was our highest priority even in the Rosemine workshop. Your Gutenbergs have developed quite a positive reputation among the craftsmen of Haldensdale, Lady Rosemine. They are also skilled despite their youth. The Gutenbergs had taught ink workshops how to make the special ink that we need to use for printing, and the carpentry workshops knew know how to make the wind parts needed for printing presses all during their long stay from spring to autumn. Once they had the scholars proofreading successfully, the printing had gone off without a hitch. There was one issue, however. The smithies in Hollandsdale still weren't skilled enough. They had completed their own letter types and other kinds of metalwork, but nothing they had made was good enough to earn Johann's approval. That simply wouldn't do. It was surprisingly easy for letter types to get scratched, worn down, or broken during the printing process, so they would need to be able to make their own. I am told the Smiths have banded together, the game continued. They are determined to receive the Gutenberg's approval by spring. In the report I received from the Gutenbergs, they expressed their concerns that Haldenzell had not accepted them, I said, recalling the report mentioning that Haldenzell had met the Gutenbergs with extremely high resistance. But I see now that those fears were for nothing. As the conversation continued, I decided to use this opportunity to relay the suggestions that had been passed on to me. Haldensdale receives few outsiders, and our lifestyles rarely see any change at all, so I can understand why the craftspeople show resi showed resistance to this new technology, the Geep responded. That said, the bonds between family members are so strong as, as strong as the earth, and once we accept someone, we protect them like family. Once the people understand the blessings that printing will bring us, they will never forget what you have done for them. They will treasure printing forever. I would like to perform, provide a formal response to the Gutenberg suggestion once Haldensdale has grown used to its technology. Please take your time. My hope is that your printing will be, bring as much wealth as possible to Haldensdale. Still, I see that the provinces, even within Aaronfest, have quite unique cultures. Haldensdale seems, mu seems much different th from Ilgner, I observed. I had once traveled all throughout Aaronfest for spring prayer, but it was hard to pick up on a province's culture when I was just landing on a stage to give my blessing and immediately leave again. We have been told you will accompany the Gutenbergs on their return to Haldensdale in spring. When this time comes, you may see firsthand the strength of our proud people, who endure even the harshest winter with a smile. Gieb Haldensdale spoke with a pleased smile as he boasted about his people, and I couldn't help but smile with him. I can imagine him among his people doing his best to protect them amid the harsh environment. While it was certainly different from Ilgner, it seemed to me that Haldensdale was a good province too. I am quite looking forward to visiting Haldensdale as well. Give Haldensdale, Ferdinand said. The Gutenbergs will be sent following spring prayer and will depart again by the end of summer. The Gieb crossed his arms, his brow furrowed as he pondered the meaning behind those words. Ferdinand went on to explain that printing workshops were due to be spread out through all throughout Aaronfest and that the Gutenbergs needed to begin long-term preparations to accomplish this. There are many provinces waiting for the Gutenbergs, Ferdinand concluded. Consider, consider it special circumstances that Haldensdale is seeing them twice. Gieb Haldensdale closed his eyes as he processed this information. Then after a moment of silence, he looked at me head on. Lady Rosemont, I find it extremely reassuring to know that you are working among the leaders of Aaronfest. As Avara's daughter, I trust that you will treasure your family and never forget your home. 
Excuse me, excuse me, Gabe Hollandale. You seem to be praising me, but both Ferdinand and Mother frequently inform me that my softness for my family is a weakness that must be dealt with. I shot Ferdinand and Elvira slightly concerned glances. Since it sounded to me like the Gabe was instructing me to prioritize him as family, but they just quietly awaited my next words. I returned my attention to the Gabe, whose dark brown eyes glimmered as he shook his head. That is not what I mean, he said. Rather, you have been gifted with a talent for invest inventing a seemingly endless stream of products. I imagine many other duchies will seek your per person seek your person in the Royal Academy, but I pray that you recall your home and your family, and that you remain an Aaron Fest nonetheless. It seemed that he wasn't telling me to prioritize Holdensale, but rather to avoid leaving the duchy. I had misunderstood him once again. A sigh escaped me. Little did he know those I considered my family were found not among nobles, but in the lower city. And with the magic contract preventing us from interacting as a family, I needed to treasure the tiny connections they still remain that still remained. Like Thule delivering her hairpins and Dad guarding me on my way to Haas. Those were connections that existed only in Aaronfest. I had no plans to leave the duchy for as long as my family was here. My family is indeed in Aaronfest, I said. Barring orders from Ab Aaronfest himself, there is no other place I would call home. Call home. Gabe Haldensdale seemed to visibly relieved to hear my declaration, but out of the corner of my eye, I noticed that Ferdinand was now wearing a deep frown. Why? Did he expect you to marry into another duchy or something? I don't know. Returning to the Royal Academy. After my meeting with Gabe Haldensdale, I participated in winter socializing. This meant meeting the nobles Ferdinand and Riarda had selected, attending tea parties hosted by members of the Florencia faction, and writing down any stories I remembered to make into romance books that Elvira and her friends would probably like. I had already gone to the winter playroom with Charlotte and spoken with no Morris about the first years. Lay nobles generally struggled with geography and history. <laughs> Sorry, since they had few opportunities to use maps and, chron and chronologies, and so we had discussed incorporating those subjects into the winter playroom. I had even given more to one of the study guides I had made for this winter's first years. Once the children were given these tastes, ta these test tasters, I expected that their interest would grow and that they would find attending the actual courses a little easier. My lady, you have a meeting with Alba Aaronfest scheduled for this afternoon, Riarda told me one day after breakfast. This is quite sudden. What could have driven him to schedule a meeting so abruptly and without notice? He received a report from Wilfried first thing this morning and wants to hear your thoughts. Something must have happened at the Royal Academy. I consented to the meeting before getting back to the Elvira pandering romance novel I was writing. Following lunch, I went to the Archduke's office. Ferdinand had apparently been summoned too, as he was reading from a board when I arrived. I hear you received a report from Wilfried, I said. Yep. Though it was less of a report and more him pleading for you to come back, Sylvester replied, handing me the report in question. I started looking it over. Almost half of the Aaronfest students had finished their lessons, and the Royal Academy was now shifting fully into socializing season. Those from our duchy had so far received almost twice as many tea party invitations compared to the year before. And there were a great number of questions floating around about our trends. Girls were as interested in the hairpins and Rinsham as I had expected, to the point that Wolfred and his retainers were finding it quite uncomfortable being surrounded whenever they attended tea parties. If these tea parties are filled with girls, why is Wolfrey attending them himself rather than sending Brunhilde or Lazletta, I asked. Because they address the invitations to all Archduke candidates. They are directed at you, of course, but since you are not there, Wolfrey is stuck going in your place, Sylvester explained. I see. He has my sympathies then. <laughs> yes, he does. He does. I glanced from Sylvester wor gleaned from Sylvester's words that had I stayed at the Royal Academy, I would have been forced to attend tea party after tea party instead. Perhaps the order to return home had actually saved me. Wolfred was suffering in my place, but, well, there was something I could do about that. He would have to attend tea parties as well at some point. There, this is a report about Ditter, Ferdinand said, handing me the board I had been, he had been reading from. It seems that Aaronfest had been unable to refuse Junkerfelger's challenge to a rematch, and so the two duchies had ended up playing another game. Aaronfest lost in the blink of an eye, of course. It lacked my strategies, and their main fighters, Angelica and Cornelius, were both away. Rothman had apparently been so disappointed that he flat out asked when I would be coming back. Professor Rothman's forgotten that I'm not an apprentice knight, hasn't he? Yep, most likely. A tea party between cousins, that is the tea party with Ehrenbach and Frembeltag, had also taken place. 
It seems that Detlinde had aggressively asked why Ironfest's grades were shooting up and why Lamprin's marriage had ended up being refused, on top of asking various questions about her trends. This does not bode particularly well for the Archduke Conference, Ferdinand observed. You can say that again, Sylvester Curd. We'll need to keep a clear eye on what moves Aaron Buck and the former Veronica of action make. Also, according to the report, Rudiger from Frembeltag had indirectly asked whether I was already engaged. Why? Ditlinde had asked the same about Wilfried, who had managed to avoid both questions by saying that we would probably have hard answers by the Archduke Conference this spring. Does this mean I'm going to get... A proposal from Fremboltag, I asked, wiping an overjoyed tear from my eyes as I reread the board over and over again. That would be my first proposal ever, even including my Irano days. Ferdinand sighed and ripped the board from my hands. Why would that make you happy, he asked. They are blatantly trying to secure your mana. How many books does Fremboltag have in its libraries, I inquired. Does it have meant more books than Erinfest? Uh, not that I want to accept the proposal, I'm just curious. I would like a list of all their books if possible. Rosemine! Dude, think about more than just the books. Is the person a good per? Is the person offering the proposal a good person? Are they nice? Would they be nice to you? Because if they're not going to be nice to you, and treat you with the respect they deserve that you deserve, it doesn't matter how many books they have. I'd say screw them. Ferdinand glared at me, his eyes brimming with doubt. If you continue to print as you currently are. We will soon leave them in the dust regardless. True. Well then, Sylvester, you can go ahead and turn down Frembeltag's proposal for me. Rosemine, is that all you're going to focus on? Sylvester barked in disbelief. Aren't there other things you should be worrying about? This isn't something to decide based on how many books the, the author has, the suitor has. She has brought this foolishness up before, Ferdinand said with a dismissive scoff. He did. And Benno brought it up first. <laughs> he was worried that she would... That was the whole reason why he was prepared to follow her, because he figured that she would accept the proposal from the one who had the most books. Oh my god. I didn't much appreciate his attitude, but he was right. Was there something, anything more important than how many books a person had? No, absolutely not. Forget about Fran Beltag's proposal. This is what you need to focus on. Ferdinand pointed at one particular paragraph on the board. In it, Anastasius was described as impatiently awaiting my gifts, while Eglantine was noted as having invited me to a tea party to introduce me to her friends. I'd much rather pretend I didn't see this and leave it all to Wilfried, I murmured. Anastasius was waiting not for me, but for the hairpins and compositions, and a tea party with Eglantine's friends meant socializing with rich daughters from high-ranking high -ranking dungeons. I had already lost all of my confidence from everyone, saying I lacked any socializing sense whatsoever. I didn't want to throw myself into the fire now of all times. <sighs> Have you not learned anything from what they've been trying to teach you? If they've been- I don't even know if they've been trying to teach you. Sylvester nodded, having heard me mut my mutter. I know how you feel, but these are direct invitations, so you're the one who has to attend. Wolfreed's already turned them down three times in your absence. If we don't at least have a date to give for your return, he's going to be in a world of pain. Ferdinand, when are you planning to send Rose my back? With all eyes on him, Ferdinand tapped his temple. Next Earth Day. I have finished all the intelligence gathering I plan to do, and Justice will have a bit more leeway by then. Leeway to do what? I asked, unsure of what Justice had to do with my return to the Royal Academy. Before Ferdinand could answer, however, Cardstead spoke up with a conflicted expression. He's been assigned to serve as Trogat's attendant. What? Trogat has other attendants, doesn't he? Why Justice? And why Ferdinand? And Ferdinand, how could you lend him to Trogat of all people? You wouldn't even let him me borrow him, I said, glaring at Ferdinand with as much displeasure as I could muster. Uh, I'm guessing Justice is supposed to keep an eye on Trogat. This is half your fault, he retorted, glaring right back at me. One angry staring contest was only inter our angry staring contest was only interrupted when Carset spoke again, looking just as conflicted as before. Rosemine, Trogat was practically forced to resign, remember? Karstead went on to explain how Riarda, in a fit of rage, had taken time off specifically to complain to Trogat's parents about what he had done. After scolding them for their incompetence in raising such a child, she had then hailed the event as a disaster for the entire house and summoned everyone, Karstead and Bonifacius included, to a family meeting about Trogat. Oh, what did Bonifacius have to say about this one? My father was just as infuriated as Riarda when he heard what Trogat had done, Karstead continued. When the talks finally ended, he gave Trogat one painful talking to. Strange. I elected to have him resign rather than firing him because I assumed that would minimize the impact on his family. 
when it comes to having a bad reputation, yes. Minimizing the damage done when it comes to his family giving him a gigantic scolding? No. Resigning has less of an impact than getting fired, but it still causes ripples, Constant replied while gently patting me on my head. Not to mention, you said not to send him to the temple, remember? Our house has to deal with the matter independently, and our decision was to assign him an attendant from our house. We intend to retreat we intend to reteach him the mindset expected of an arch noble serving the archducal family from the ground up. But Justice is a scholar. Can he do attendant work? I asked. I knew that Justice was a skilled scholar with his love of gathering intelligence and retrieving all sorts of information. But would he be capable of diligently serving a lord or lady? I mean he serves Ferdinand, so what's the difference? Of course he can, Sebastian said with a grin. Justice is the attendant Ferdinand brought to the Royal Academy back in his day. Really? Okay. I looked up at Ferdinand surprised. He nodded. At the moment, I can only see his... I can use only his services as a scholar, but he is my attendant as well. He became an apprentice attendant under Riyard's instruction, but it is my understanding that he also took scholar courses in the Royal Academy as per his own intent... as per his own interests. It was he who informed me that I could take multiple courses at once. The fuck? Today, I learned that Justice is responsible for all the legends surrounding Ferdinand. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Justice will re-educate Traga. Keep an eye on you. Gather information within the Royal Academy and report back to Aaron Vestal at once. He will place a disproportionate amount of focus on gathering information. If someone does not watch him in turn, but with Riarda in there, we should have nothing to fear. I imagine this will make him terribly busy, but could I have him train the apprentice scholars too, I asked. Train the apprentice scholars, Sylvester repeated, blinking in surprise. I am referring to the scholars I will be raising for the printing and papermaking industries. I will soon be selecting lay scholars and med scholars who will need to do business with commoners, and they will need an arch scholar to lead them, no? And their work is a government affair, so the won't they eventually need to form a connection with the next archduke? It was yet no unknown who would be the next Archduke, and my intention was to also train one of Melkor's scholars for after he was baptized. Sylvester fell into thought. Not a bad idea, but you'll only get apprentices that way. You'll want an arch scholar to keep them in order, too. Any recommendations for an arch scholar who could manage them in Rose to Rosemine's will? Sylvester asked, looking over at Ferdinand. Ferdinand's eyes wandered for a moment before he gave his response. Few things are more difficult than deducing... Uh, Rosemine's intentions. No one had come to mind, it seemed. There was a brief silence, broken only when Karstas suddenly clapped his hands together. How about Elvira, he suggested. If arbitrating between Rosemine and the Archnobles will be a big part of the job, she seems perfect for it. Hmm. I cannot deny that Elvira displayed great interest in the printing industry while Rosemine was asleep, and she actively incorporated it into Haldensdale. She will have more knowledge than other scholars, too, Ferdinand mused. I agree. She is perfect match for the job, for the role. For the role. Sylvester's so eyes began to sparkle. All right, let's see what she thinks then. She's interested enough in printing to start making her own books. Now that our kids are all grown, she should be fine getting back into scholar work. Cardstead said. And with that, the topic shifted to interesting Elvira with keeping the printing and papermaking industries organized. I knew she was an excellent scholar, and it was very reassuring to know she would be taking the job for me. Though I was also a case, a cause for great concern. If I give Mother free reign, I've got a feeling she might establish a make books about Ferdinand Squadron and corrupt the industries from within. Eh, oh well. It's not that big a deal. As long as Ferdinand don't figure it out, it's fine. Karsta had suggested it, but Ferdinand agreed with it, and Sylvester had a point proved it. Elvira could do what she wanted with all, with all her skill. Considering Justice's personality, I am somewhat concerned about him raising apprentice scholars, Ferdinand said to me. However, this will be your only opportunity to borrow him from me, for the purpose of training scholars for the printing industry. Make full use of him while you can. It was decided that I would leave for the Royal Academy to socialize next Earth Day. Ferdinand was going to return to the temple in the meantime, but I was instructed to remain in the council for a bit longer to adjust to socializing as much as possible. So he says, but I won't be meeting any nobles without Ferdinand, plus Mother's fury, flurry of tea parties has oh, calmed down. I pa passed the days until my departure visiting the Winter Playroom and meeting with Charlotte. Just three more days until you leave, she said. I'll miss you once you're gone, sister. I won't be away for, a so lo for so as long this time, Charlotte. I would have one week to attend tea parties before the Interdutchy Tournament, and the graduation ceremony brought me my, 
my first year in the Royal Academy to a close. In total, I will be gone for two weeks at most. I will do my best to raise our duchy's rank as much as possible for the sake of your upcoming first year, I said to Charlotte. Please prioritize getting rest, sister. And if you wish to say that you were acting for my sake, I would like for you to leave at least something for me to conquer on my own. At this rate, brother and you will take all the glory for yourself, she replied with puffed out cheeks. We've raised the grades even average too much during our first year. It would just make things harder for Charlotte when she entered the academy next year. Hmm. I never really thought about leaving room for Charlotte to show off and impress others. An ordinance flew into the room while I was practicing sewing embroidery with Charlotte. It repeated a message from Ferdinand three times. We have received word from the Gilberta Company that they have finished the hairpin and wish to hear your thoughts. I have told them to bring it tomorrow afternoon so you will need to be here by then. I get to see Tuli! No, it's duty complete. The ordinance reverted back to a yellow face tone. I tapped it lightly with my staff and said, understood, in response, trying to contain the, the welling excitement in my voice and the best of my ability. Having heard the message from Ferdinand, I utterly left to el tell Ella to repair to leave for the temple. While Riarda started covering my me in warm clothes so that we could depart at once. I can't believe Ferdinand is making you go all the way to the temple for this. Couldn't he just send the hairpin to the castle? He really needs to learn to be more considerate, Riarda huffed. This actually was Ferdinand being considerate, though. Tuli wasn't yet ready to come to the castle, and I wanted to see her, not the Gilberta Company. This is the hairpin ordered by royalty, I explained. I will need to examine it before Ab Arenfest sees it so that I can have it remade if necessary. You take on too much work, my lady. You do, sister, Charlotte chimed in. You're still not well, remember? She had stopped her embroidering and was now regarding me with a reproachful look as she handed me her, so had her sewing tools to an attendant. I thank you both ever so much for worrying about me. I will return to the castle tomorrow after, the ca after di checking the hairpin. I'm leaving for the Royal Academy this Earth Day, after all. Riardi, you may prepare for my departure while I'm gone. We have a lot of luggage from Ferdinand, and I expect so I expect there will be even more once I return from the temple, I said. He will no doubt unload a ton of Hersher's documents and magic tools on me. Definitely. Riarda chuckled, perhaps remembering how much luggage Ferdinand had brought with him to the castle. Oh yes, you may leave that to me. Everything will be ready. And so I went to the castle's entrance with my guard knights. Riarda had apparently contacted Norbert as he was there giving instructions to some servants. I learned around in my guard knights. Cornelius, Lenore, you will both you you both need to prepare for our return to the Royal Academy this Earth Day. Understood, Lady Rosemine. With that, I returned to the temple with Daniel and Angelica taking the lead. I was finally getting a chance to see Tuli, but Ferdinand was sitting with us for some reason. Perhaps he thought he couldn't trust me with this, considering that this hairpin was being made for royalty? Why is he being a pest and trying to ruin this moment? The last thing I wanted was Ferdinand scaring Tuli with his harsh words and expressionless face. I needed to serve as a dam to protect her. And so, with that resolve in my heart, I glared at him with as much intensity as I could muster. What is with that displeased expression, he asked, looking more entirely satisfied as he drank the tea Fred had given him. I am displeased, but this is primarily the face of a woman who has steeled her resolve. I sense only hostility and trepidation. How many times must I tell you to learn to control your emotions, he asked, pinching my cheeks. A scariest face I could manage vanished in an instant as tears welled up in my eyes. Unlike Benno, Ferdinand never held back, so his pinching legitimately hurt. I put my hands over my cheeks to prevent any future attacks, at which point I heard Gil arrive on the first floor, and the group he was with started climbing up the stairs. Hi, Priest, this is Otto, the one who inherited the Gilberta Company, and this is Tuli, Lady Rosemond's personal hairpin craftswoman. Benno said it was their first time meeting Ferdinand, and so it was necessary for him to introduce them both. They stepped forward and knelt in turn. May this meeting ordained by the meeting ordained by the harsh judgment of Avaglib, the god of life, be blessed, they said. I bless this day from the bottom of my heart. May Avaglib's guidance take the Gilberta Company to ever greater heights, Ferdinand replied, blessing them. I am ever so delighted to see Lady Rosemine doing well, Tuli said once she and Otto had stood up. She looked shockingly mature for someone who was still, ju still just twelve years old. Her hair was in a big braid, much like before, but now she wore the Gilberta Company's apprentice uniform. There was no longer any trace of the energetic little girl who had used to run through the forest. Tuli had always been a fast grower, but in just two years her legs had gotten long and slender, and visible bumps had appeared on her chest. The youthfulness of her face had vanished, and she looked a bit lala more like mother than she did before. She moved with quiet elegance. There was nothing of the sister I knew in how she carried herself, how she spoke, or how she curtsied to nobles. As I reeled from the shock of my two-year absence being once again shoved in my face, Tuli looked at me, her blue eyes wrinkling in a warm smile. Her expression alone seemed to say, It's been so long I've missed you, and the love overflowing from, ha overflowing from her relaxed attention in my body. This is the order product, Benno said, his words prompting Tuli to delicately open the wind box on the table. 
I could tell at once just how experienced she had become. There was no longer any trace of clumsiness or awkwardness in how her fingers moved. The hairpin she took out was made with a correct made with a Corelli of warm red, the divine color of Gadul, the goddess of earth. The large flower was surrounded by smaller white flowers, as well as green vines that invoked images of the coming of spring. Each petal had smooth, flowing curves, and around each flower were decorative lace. Even the thread was fancy. It was undoubtedly the best, most regal-looking hairpin Tuli had ever made. I could easily imagine Eglantine wearing it, and how it would perfectly complement her golden hair. It's splendid, I said, sighing with awe. Ferdinand gave a contented nod. This will do without issue. Well done, Gilbert and Company. Receiving praise from Ferdinand, despite the perpetually scary look on his face, was enough to ease the tension Tuli had been feeling. It's exceedingly well made, I added. This will likely surely bring both Anast Prince Anastasius and Lady Eglantine great joy. Your talents have grown much over the past two years. I am surprised. I thank you, Tuli replied. I have humbly brought a hairpin for you as well, Lady Rosemine. She held out a spring hairpin she had apparently made for my sake. I immediately elected to buy it and shifted to the stead for her like I always did. Will you put it on me, I asked. Tuli carefully appro approached, carefully watching Ferdinand out of the corner of her eye. She pulled out the hairpin that was currently in my braids and inserted the new one. It bit if my hair had gotten caught on my shoulder in the process, so she brushed it back. Does it suit me, I asked. I made it for you, Lady Rosemine. It suits you perfectly, she said, a mischievous glint in her eyes. I smiled as we exchanged glances while Ferdinand silently watched our communication with no change of expression. My return to the Royal Academy came soon after I received the hairpins. If at any point Rosemine seems like she's about to go on another rampage, stop her with all you have, Ferdinand said to my garden knights. They were the first to step forward onto the teleportation circle and disappear. I would be leaving with Riarda. Before we went, however, the hairpin for Erglantine, the song dedicated to the goddess of light, boxes filled with small trial buttons, bottles of Rensham, things for Hersher, and any other remaining items were all sent off. We'll be following to see the inner duchy tournament. Try not to lose control of yourself. Moderation is key, got it? I know, Sylvester. I need to leave land for Charlotte to conquer when she arrives, no? Rosemont, are you her ally or mine? Sylvester exclaimed, his eyes wide. I do not understand the full meaning of your question, but it is not is it not natural that I would be Charlotte's ally? I am her older sister, I said, proudly puffing at my chest. Sylvester cradled his head and groaned in response. Ferdinand gave Sylvester a few light pats on the back while Fer looking at me with a mixture of resignation and exasperation. There is no point in thinking about this. Absolutely nothing is going through Rosemont's empty head right now, he said. Hey! Rude! I spend every day executing my ideas and thinking of ways to be the best older sister for Charlotte. Yes, yes, do your best for Charlotte's sake, but think of nothing more than that. In any case, I have told Justice here to gather intelligence. Bring him with you to tea parties whenever you can. We were forbidden from standing... Uh, attending most tea parties where the secrets of girls were normally shared. It wasn't often that I could bring Hartman or any other male scholars with me. You want me to bring justice to tea parties? Does that mean? Do not make me say it. Your assumptions are correct. I was being told to have justice cross-dressed so that I could bring him to tea parties, but wouldn't that just lead people to assuming I was the one with the weirdo cross-dressing attendant rather than Trogot? Is it just me, or does Aaronfest have an unusually large collection of absolute weirdos? There's Professor Hersher, Justice. I would not like to be considered among them, I said, thinking about what to do if people started to assume I was weird by association. It's too late for that. <laughs> You're already known as a weirdo. Ferdinand, Karsten, and Sylvester all made incrustable faces. Perhaps at times ignorance is bliss, Ferdinand amused. What? Just go, he said, shooting me, shooing me away with the hand, his hand. I stood next to Riyarda on the teleportation circle, feeling discontent and felt the mana start to move. A week of socializing. You're late, Rosemine, Wilfrid declared. He was waiting for me in the dormitory with his head held high, his hands on his hips, and his feet planted firmly on the ground. He looked just as Sylvester had when I arrived at the castle, and he had said pretty much the same thing, too. Like father, like son. I have returned, dear brother. Do recall, though, that it was Ab, Aaronfest, and Ferdinand who set the date for my return. Director anger at them, not me. But thanks to you, I had to endure some of the worst days of my life. It seemed that since once the real socializing had started, Aaron Fest had received incomparably more tea party invitations than during the years prior. Unable to refuse invitations from higher ranking duchies, Wilfred had been forced to stand, attend, and give nothing but empty formal replies. There were also more invitations from other ranks and professors, all of whom wanted to know more about our duchy. Having to attend tea more tea parties than usual, we had enough was bad enough, but getting more attention meant duchies of similar ranks were even more aggressive in probing. 
The Ironfest Fest students, who had up until this point been largely ignored, had no idea what to do. Hersher would normally be the one to guide and instruct them as their dormitory supervisor, but it seemed she wasn't getting to going to leave her research under any circumstances. There was also a considerable time lag between Aaron Fest sending questions and getting answers. Wolfred asked me to understand how he had completely isolated, been completely isolated with enemies on all sides and no assistance. Look, I know how you feel, but that's not entirely my fault. If we're going to be mad at anyone, shouldn't it be Professor Hersher, not me? It's because you socialized with Prince Anastasius and the Archduke candidate from Klastenburg. I did not socialize with them because I wanted to. They invited me and I had no choice but to comply. Would you have refused them? I'm struggling precisely because I can't refuse them. Socializing with Greater Duchess had evidently been put on pause when Wolfrey told them the date I was due to return. Riarda smiled as she watched him desperately try to convey just how much he had suffered in my absence. Wolfrey, my boy, if you want to have a conversation like this, how about we find some place to sit first? You have more to say to Milady, don't you? That's right, Judifer interjected, stepping forward. I also have a lot to speak to Lady Rosemine about. Judith had been the only one of my apprentice knight retainers to remain in the Royal Academy. She had initially planned to return to Airfest and continue her work as soon as she finished her lessons, but the dinner rematch with Dunkelfagger had delayed this. She had then gotten wrapped up in Royal Academy socializing due to being my retainer, foiling her plan entirely. I passed all my classes. They didn't let me go back to Aaronfest, though, so I couldn't guard you. It's not that I messed up or anything, Judith exclaimed, shooting Wolfried a side look. He merely shrugged in response. How could I have let her go back to Aaronfest? It seemed that the sudden increase in tea party invitations and the discussions that came with them had forced all those from Aaronfest to mobilize since we lacked the population to handle the situation otherwise. Everyone had needed to finish their classes as fast as they could manage, boldly challenging and pausing passing their exams to get on their feet. Now, now, Riarda said, save those words for the common room. Give my lady's health, given my lady's health, things will only get worse if she collapses. I take her thing, I'll take her things to her room. She urged Wolfried forward with a light push on the back before heading for my room. I watched as Riarda climbed the stairs and it was then that I noticed someone pass her on their way down. Someone with lively brown hair and a truly excited expression. It was Justice! Trogot was there, too, looking exhausted as he was practically dragged along behind him. It has been too long, Lady Rosemine. I have heard you start the planting company well, Justice. They survived the two years I was absent in large part because of you, and for that I thank you. I look forward to your continued service. I am being blessed with unusual experiences thanks to you, my lady. I will do my best to live up to your expectations. As I was speaking to Justice, Trogot's eyes wandered as though he was trying to think of what to say. In the end, he centered on looking at the ground. His happy, confident smile was completely gone and replaced with a despondent look. I can only imagine how severely his family had scolded him in Arafest. I considered whether I should say something to Trogot, but before I even had the chance, Justice gave him a sharp elbow. It was a quick movement, and judging by the grunt that escaped Trogot when it landed, it was intended to hurt. That polite smile vanished from Justice's face. Instead, he glared at Trogot with an expression so cold it looked like it belonged to someone else entirely, like Ferdinand. Trogot, don't you have something to say, he asked. What's wrong with you? Speak up. Trogot gritted his teeth and slowly knelt before me, all the while cradling his side where he had been elbowed. My shallow thinking led to me being unthinkably rude. I am truly sorry, Lady Rosemine. I apologize from the bottom of my heart. I opened my mouth to forgive him, but Justice narrowed his brown eyes and stopped me. Trogot deserves no words of compassion, Lady Rosemine. He has committed sins which must not be forgiven so easily. My other retainers all nodded in agreement. I silently thanked Justice for having stopped me before I could reflexively forgive Trogot. In any case, my lady, Lord Ferdinand told me the other day to start training the scholars, but what exactly does he want me to do, Justice asked. I need to raise individuals who can support the growing printing industry. To that end, I will need people who can interact with commoners and who know how the industry works. Above all, however, they must have a latent talent for scholar work. This is what I wish for you to do. The way Trogot followed behind us as we entered the common room made him look like the attendant rather than Justice. He couldn't even say anything about it since Justice had been sent by the fa his family to whip him into shape. Maybe he had tried to complain already only to get beaten down? Probably. Welcome back, Lady Rosemine. We have been eagerly awaiting your return. The students in the common room greeted me when I arrived, their faces positively lighting up with relief. This year's socializing must have been just as hard on Wilf as Wilfred had said. And so I have returned, everyone. I hear from Wolfrey that things have been difficult in my absence. I would like to know what happened while I was in Aaronfest, I said. I then listened to what everyone had to say regardless of eggs or faction, much like I did when the temple. In truth, we had not held any tea parties for Archduke Candace from other duchies. There is no helping that, 
as no other duchy needed any candidates to return home for the dedication ritual, but... Last year, when there had been no Aaronfest Archduke candidates, the Archnoble girls had attended tea parties with the duchies just fine. Now that I was here, however, it was considered an insult for them to send invitations to the Archduke candidates of the duchies. This has resulted in us lagging behind when it came to socializing with other Archduke candidates. I imagine there is a reason for it, but why did you not hold the tea parties yourself, Wolverine? I don't know much about holding tea parties since men aren't normally supposed to hold them. I also had male socializing to handle. My hands were enough full enough just visiting all those tea parties that higher ranked duchies were inviting us to. For men, socializing involved holding and attending small hunting tournaments or proving one's strength through noble games such as wedding while chatting and sharing information. Tea and sweets were served as well, but unlike at the tea parties for girls, they were far from the main event. Wolfrid had been forced to keep up with male socializing while also attending a slew of tea parties filled with girls from higher ranking duchies. I see you all work very hard in my absence, I said. I suppose now it is my turn to begin socializing. What I must do first is visit the library to support short supply of shorts and wise with mana. Everyone gathered, collectively narrowed their eyes. Wait, where did that come from? Wolfrid asked. Your priority is your meeting with Prince Hanastasius. Klassenberg is asked to be informed of your return as well. The library, when you have all have the higher ranking duchies asking after you? There is also the dinner rematch that Professor Roffin requested upon hearing of your return. There is no time. We want to hold at least one tea party for the Archduke candidates and for the duchies before the Interduchy tournament. I felt my soul leave my body as everyone listed off all the things I needed to do before I could go to the library. Well, I mean, you have to give them some mana at the very least. Give them the mana and then go do whatever else you have to do, even if you can't do the reading stuff. Having to cram so much into the next few into the few days that remained before the tournament and the graduation ceremony was completely unreasonable. If you ask me, I turned around hoping to discuss this with Yarda, and then I remembered she had gone to put away my luggage. I looked around the common room, but only Justice seemed as though he might have good answers for me. I'd rather not have to do this, but he was Ferdinand's retainer. Both Lutz and Benno also gave him high praise. Surely I can trust him to give me advice. Justice, I said. He blinked in surprise from where he stood behind Trogot, having not expected me to single him out. Then he walked over and knelt before me. Yes, my lady? What do I need to do first? If we had Ferdinand here, what approach do you think he would take? Am I permitted to speak freely? We have no dorm supervisor to rely on. You may speak not as Trogat's attendant, but as Ferdinand's scholar. Understood. As you wish, my lady, Apprentice gave, gave me her schedule, just took the schedule from Hartmut, and then lowered his eyes and thought. What we need to confirm first is how many people can be mobilized in this upcoming socializing season. Have preparations for the introductory tournament been completed? I hadn't been present, so I looked around the room for an answer. Wolfried, his retainers, and Hartman all furrowed their brows. Hmm, no. To be honest, we haven't had the time at the mo or the manpower, Wolfried said. We have made some progress, but preparations are far from complete, Hartman added. Justice counted the remaining days on his fingers and then mutters. It seems like we got some tight, tight time constraints under his breath before turning to all those gathered. Very well. Everyone but Milady and her retainers should now prioritize preparing for the Interduchy Tournament. For the OBS of other duchies are going to be present. Lord Wilfrid, lead the preparations with your retainers. Justice watched as Wilfrid and his retainers nodded in response. Then he turned his attention back to me. Milady, your highest priority is to work through all the backlog socializing. I would suggest that you first request a meeting with the prince. From there, send ordinances to the greater duchies who attempted to meet with you and announce your return. As well as the fact that Aaronfest will soon be hosting a tea party. Once the date is established for your meeting with the prince... We can decide on a date for the tea party and send invitations to other, all the other duchies. We can finish the bulk of socializing all at once by having as many duchies as possible par participate. I can already feel the huge weight lifting from my shoulders. With such an apt concrete plan, I would be able to secure at least a little time in the library. You may go to the library to replenish Schwartz and Weiss's mana when the time is right, Justice said. Of course, that is all you will be doing there. You will not have time to read. Mm. It is possible that greater duchies will summon you even after your upcoming tea party is announced. Furthermore, considering how many we are, we are going to lose to the Interduchy tournament preparations, Aaronfest does not have the leeway to allow for so many of your retainers to be stuck with you in the library. Do you understand my position? Yes, I conceded. Going to the library meant bringing along several of my retainers, thereby putting them out of commission. I couldn't just wander around alone. Wolfrey looked at Justice shocked that he would so casually ban me from the library. He then looked at me, concerned that I might be on the verge of exploding. But of course, even I could show some restraint when we were in such a dire straits. I'll be fine. There are books here in the dorm that I can read. I'd much rather be holed up in the library, though. 
Justice, what about Dunkle Felger's request for a rematch for Wolfie Dast? Justice raised an eyebrow. That is not even worth thinking about. Naturally, we will refuse. There must be some kind of misunderstanding for Professor Rothman to be challenging Lady Rosemind. Unlike Lord Ferdinand, she is not an apprentice knight, and as a first year, she is not meant to participate in games of dinner. Times have changed, and dinner is now a sport for apprentice knights, so we should not have any trouble refusing. Luckily, the introductory tournament is quickly approaching. Justice, having attended the Royal Academy at the same time as Rothman, flatly rejected the idea of a rematch. He was completely right in doing so, but most surely refusing a higher-ranking duchy wouldn't be so easy. This is a request from Dunkelfelder, though. How are we to refuse them, I asked. We shall leave that to Professor Hersher. Not only does it come under her remit, but she also has much experience refusing Rothman from the door. From the door. Days Lord Ferdinand attended the academy. It will pose no problem for her. Oh yeah, Justice was Ferdinand's attendant. But how do we ask Professor Hersher to do that, Wilfred asked, deeply concerned. She won't leave her lab. Justice had an immediate answer. Professor Hersher will readily work for us if we use the packages from Lord Ferdinand as bargaining chips. She's quite a valuable asset when used properly. After all, she is talented enough to have joined the sovereignty. Ferdinand had been challenged to dinner games nonstop back in his school days, and since Hersher had wanted to keep using him as a lab assistant, she had apparently engaged in constant battles with Rothman when he when she where she refused them all. Securing another victory would be easy, it seemed. Maybe. You suddenly seem so reliable, Justice, I murmured. Oh, what did you think of me before? I thought you were just a weirdo who went around doing whatever interested you, even to the point of cross-dressing to gather intelligence. Justice gave a sly grin as though he had read my thoughts. Gathering intelligence is my job, you know, he said under his breath. That was true, but as far as I had seen, it was much more of a hobby to him than anything. To be honest, I couldn't believe he was actually this compo competent. Now I knew why Tr Ferdinand treasured him as a retainer despite him being so weird. Now then, milady, let us discuss the meeting with the prince and the tea party in another room, Justice said, prompting Lay's letter to bar leave the room, common room, the common room to secure a meeting room for us. He then looked over at Wilfred and the others. Everyone else split into groups based on profession and then gather around Lord Wilf Wilfred's retainers to discuss the upcoming interdutchy tournament. We have no time to waste. Think and act carefully such that all you ti your time is used to its fullest. With Justice having concluded his speech in a, and in a very Ferdinand-like manner, everyone began moving around to follow his instructions. To think that having a competent adult who could give clear instructions would be such a boon. By the time Liz Letta came to get us, the apprentice knights, apprentice scholars, and apprentice attendants had all split into groups to discuss the interdutchy tournament. They had the energy of a classroom prior to a sports festival or a cultural festival. I slowly watched them as I exited the common room and entered the nearby meeting room that just that had been prepared for us. Inviting all the duchies at once will result in an event of a larger scale than initially planned, Justice said. If we do not have Lord Wolfrey provide us assistance on the day of, I believe you will find things quite difficult, considering you have spent so little time with the other students. He will surely be willing to help for just one day, I replied. Uh, you might have a hard time with that. Maybe. Riarda entered, having finished preparing my room, and we discussed the proper language to use with royalty. I then sent an ordinance to Anastasius, reporting that I have returned and that I wanted to set up a meeting to deliver the hairpin. <clears throat> as, I waited for, as I waited for a response, I informed Hartman and Feline that Elvira and I will be handling the continued growth of the Ironfest printing industry. I also told them that Justice will be training the apprentice scholars. As this is a new industry, it is important that the next op be involved in its machinations, I explained. For that reason, Wolfreed's, Charlotte's, Melkor's, and my apprentice scholars will all participate so will scholar, as will scholars sent by Skeebs who have existing experience working with commoners. Lady Rosemine, will I really be involved in such an important industry? Feline choked out in a fearful voice as I saw her pale face and wavering light green eyes. I suddenly recalled something Daniel had said to me, that he had endured much envy over becoming my guard knight and growing his mind so much despite being a mere lay noble. Feline was a lay noble too, so the same terrible thing had to be happening to her as well. If you fear the consequences of participating in the printing industry, I can have others fulfill the role, I said. That won't be necessary. I have resolved to make books with you later, Rose Mind. I will not turn my back on the decision, Feline replied, her fist clenched with determination. Those very same hands trembled with fear, but her voice was clear and strong. I couldn't help but smile at her conviction. Hartman, I will do what I can myself, but please keep an eye out to ensure that Feline is not antagonized by the other scholars. As you wish, Hartman replied. 
I told Hartman and Feline that they were going to be betrayed by key figures in the printing industry, or to be key figures in the printing industry, and that they would need to learn from justice during that short period he was here. It was around then that the Ordinons returned. Come tomorrow at Fifth Bell. I wish to give the heart hair pen to Eglantine as soon as possible, came Anastasius' voice. The message repeated three times before the white bird returned to being a yellow face stone. I sent my note reply of acknowledgement and the, then returned to Brunhild and Lazletta. If my meeting with Prince Anastasius is tomorrow, when can we hold the tea party? We need to write the letters of invitation accordingly, correct? I believe it will be possible in five, no, four days, Brunhilda said. Finishing the tea party sooner rather than later will be ideal. Our visitors will need to prepare for the introduction tournament just as we do. Incidentally, we have to prepare for Angelica's graduation as well, don't we? She looked at the girl in question while Zlay's letter gave a firm nod of agreement. I brought my costume with me, Angelica said, her head tilted in vague confusion. I don't think there's anything else I need to do. Brunhilda's eyebrows shot up in anger. Do you not need to prepare for the stage as much as possible? You are blessed with such beauty. It will be a waste to not wash your hair with Rinsham and adorn you with hairpins to emphasize Arabesque trends. Sister, mother, father and mother inform me that you have yet to decide on your hairstyle, makeup, and the like. You use guard duty, guard duty at the temple to escape those discussions. No? Lazleta's observation made Angelica sadly lower her eyes. Her long eyelashes cast small shadows over her face, making her look like the very picture of a wounded young woman. But in reality, that was the face she pulled whenever she was feeling lazy. I had gotten pretty good at seeing through her, dece her deceitful expressions, and of course, Lazleta was just as good. She made an exasperated face and then gave a knowing smile. I will pick a hairstyle that suits you perfectly, sister, so at least pay ni play nice on that day. If you say so, Lazleta, I'll play nice, Angelica said it with a truly melancholic nod. She was a spinning image of a sorrowful princess being married off to another country for political reasons, paired with a man she had no feelings for. But it was all just an act. Incidentally, while she was crippling, cripplingly lazy when it came to fe formal affairs, she was a very dedicated guard knight. She would invest a great amount of time strengthening the face stone for her knight armor and embroidering the magic circles on her cape. I know that you do not care much for wearing anything that does not increase your fighting potential, sister, but you must not bring shame to the man who will be escorting you, Lazleta continued. I blinked several times and then looked at Angelica, and Lazleta hadn't mentioned their father or grandfather there. She had said, the man. In other words, Angelica had an actual escort. Who was Angelica's escort, I asked. Not family, I presume. What? Lady Rosemine, do you not know? Sister, have you told no one else? I have heard nothing. Lazleta looked at me, then Angelica, and then at everyone else. Upon seeing her sister make a puzzled expression as though this had nothing to do with her, she frowned with a deep concern before forcing an unconvincing smile. If nobody knows, I suppose it can be a fun surprise to look forward to. Who is Angelica's date? Now I'm really curious. I am too! Okay, I think I'm going to have to end it up here, and I will see everybody next time.